Is that the Mercedes emblem? Yep. Sick. That is so dope, man. Did you ever imagine, when Mike was much younger, that you'd be working for your son one day? Absolutely not. When he was born, my wife and I said, well, we have this baby now, we're not going to let him change our lives one bit, we're just going to proceed, go on as, as before, he, he'll follow along with us. And ten years later, we started to work with him, and a couple of years after that, for him. So, definitely unimaginable, you know, never. Never in a million years would I, would I have thought that we'd be working for our son, but very, very happy to do it. Very glad to uh, contribute my knowledge and experience to Mike so he didn't have to stumble through some of the mistakes that I made. I had another job previously, and uh, they had cutbacks, and I got laid off, so I was actually unemployed. And at that time, things were gradually building with flat face, and um, more and more checks or cash was arriving in the mail. And what would start out as five or ten minutes of work each day turned into 20 minutes, 30 minutes an hour, two hours, and it just started building more and more. So at that point, we all sat down and discussed the next step since there was potential in something. Ever since Mike was very young, you know, there was something about him you know, to me, he, you know, he was a nice, happy toddler, and his teachers would always say that he was popular and that the kids liked him, and the other kids around him always had fun, too. Like, they, they were all, you know, very happy. And, um, you know, it's no exception with Flatface because he, you know, does his videos and he's got the following. At the last fingerboard event, some kids slept on this both nights, and each night it rained overnight, and he slept through it. I don't know how. I actually had to get a new couch because she didn't just pee on it, she peed on it a lot. So I pretty much have my whole collection of fingerboards up on the wall. They're from all different countries, made by all different people, and most of them have a story behind them. I made some of them, my first board ever is up there, and a bunch of the first ones that I got from other people, and then some of my friends made all the boards, 
A lot of them are hand painted, some engraved ones, um, laser cut, all kinds of cool stuff. So every single one's unique. So this is the part of my basement where I make the boards. They're all fully handmade wooden boards made out of five layers of wood and they're made just like a real skateboard. And this is basically what brought us here, what got me this house and this successful company and a ton of fun. A few years ago, the Make-A-Wish Foundation contacted me because there was a kid whose wish was to meet me and he was pretty sick and everything. So basically, they grant him that wish by flying me out there and I got to spend a day with him, fingerboard. I gave him all kinds of stuff that I wanted to give him, just like some fingerboard ramps to have fun with. And it was a really powerful experience. Alright, so this is just a random fingerboard spot in my town and basically we just found it and it looks like a pretty much perfect bank to ledge and it's just here so it kind of just shows how you can fingerboard just about anywhere you go and use anything you find. Just like in real skateboarding, you can find spots that aren't made for it but they pretty much are. We're here at the Flat Face Rendezvous area and it's a big place full of fingerboard parks. I've got about 25 of them right now and I do rendezvous events twice a year which is a huge event where fingerboarders come together from all over the world and all over the country and everyone comes here for a day of fun and fingerboarding.